Yo, it's your boy Snap, and welcome back to the BTE podcast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's your boy Checkmate, man. Well, let me let me start saying it's your boy. It's your man Checkmate, man. I'm back live in effect, man. Welcome back. I'm gonna like them to all. I know I kind of made the intro longer than it needed to be, but that's what it needs to be today. You feel me? You feel me? Man, let's get back into the, this topic right here, man. It's something that ain't no need for explanation, no nothing. We need to dive back into it, right back into it, gang. Today, 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 today. Isn't it something like that? Today, today, today. Boom. That's, that's, that's the same. Today, okay. today, today. Oh, yeah. But boom. All right. But today, we'll be talking about Muslim men. But not only Muslim men, but how me, Checkmate D, how y'all want to refer to them, that became Muslim men, where we started and the journey we have went on because man bro it's been a journey dude it's been a Long journey, journey. Come, coming back to where, where i started from you know what the revert <laughs> revert not yeah. the, com- the convert man. talk to him again he said the revert not the convert i don't think y'all really peep what he said or heard what he said but yeah it's been i can say for myself it's been what we in year 2022 so that's three years now three or four go three years you know just i'm gonna say three years of me really practicing and learning how to become a better muslim and just becoming a better man overall because it's not like i don't want to i don't want to sit here and use and say oh i'm muslim as if i'm filling out an application saying uh, are you white black no latino i don't want that right because being muslim and being a part of the is islam culture is deeper than just a name or a label it's a lifestyle right and that's the, the on the truth a lot of people want to say ah oh, man this is a nah like being islam is, is a lifestyle and it's a practice that you go at every day you can't just what what, what one of the men say he said uh he said my dad muslim so i'm half muslim yeah man that was wild man. <laughs> but the crazy you have to you have to to honestly understand the dean and not get stuck in the dunya you feel me because once you get stuck in that duty, it's hard to it's hard to understand your true self and what you're meant, truly meant to be. So, man, can you explain that for some people? Because that was foreign language, even even for me at parts. From uh, the, well, the the dunya is the life. You feel me? The, 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 just the life in general. You feel me? Your dean is is, is, is the way of uh, the life of Islam. You feel me? The dunya you should never get stuck in the dunya and live as a practical man. You feel me? You want to you want to embrace and and live your dean. You feel me? You want to be a part of the dean. Okay, okay, okay. But I mean that right there, isn't that one thing we already discussed way early in multiple podcasts is you you wanna always find something higher and not even just something higher, but in the sense of you don't wanna be stuck in the same spot your whole life. Right. You don't wanna be in your twenty one year old mindset your whole life. You right. don't wanna do you wanna grow at certain things. The same mistakes you made as a kid, you don't want those, you don't want to make those same mistakes as an adult. Right. You know, you always wanna learn from them. And that was at least one thing with me. So I'll get right into my story, right? On how I even found it, on how I found Islam and why I chose I mean, Islam really chose me. You know, a lot of guys who he who he wills and everything. So right. uh, I say that. But I, really going back, I want to stress that point of being peaceful. This is, is Islam is to me. If I had to choose one word, it is it, peaceful because in everything we do, it's always out of love and, and, and peace with others. Right? We don't we don't want no harm to be brought upon to others. And that that my character though. So it was kind of like before I even wanted to announce it or even really be open about it. It was like I was already Muslim. I was already a part of Islam. Right. It, was, it was within me. I just didn't know exactly what it was. I was poisoned by everything else in, right. this, in this outside world that didn't mean nothing. That was trying to keep me at my at a lower vibration and I was trying to elevate myself. So once uh, it started, originally it started when I was trying to focus on myself and find out who I was and what I really wanted to become in life. Because right. I knew there was something more. I knew I needed not I needed. I knew I wanted to be more, and I knew that I was supposed to be more. Mm-hmm. It was it was something inside me saying, "Okay, I'm different. There's right. something about me that I'm not like everybody else." Right. So I'm like, "Okay, well, what do what do I do? How can I do it? Like, how can I expand 
and grow on, on the on that unique factor of me. How we said in the first um, first podcast, everybody's unique in their yes. own way. Most definitely. Everybody has something that you know. You got something I don't have. I have something that you don't have. Right. Everybody brings something different to this table. So some people may bring the turkey, some people may bring the stuffing, some people may bring the green bean mac and cheese. You're bringing something different that that's your own flavor. Right. So I had already characteristics of the of Islam and, and being Muslim within me. So then once I started practicing, it was once I really started to see that man, like this is where I'm supposed to be. I really felt what's the I don't want to say included because that's not that's not the best term to. Right. Uh, describe it, it, but I felt welcome. Right. I felt like I I was I was I was here before. There we go. I feel like I was already here. Right. It was something within me. So once I started learning, it was like I wanted to learn more. I went on YouTube and man, I, I, if I knew his YouTube off the top of my head, I'd give him a shout out. Right. But it was a dude who uh, was teaching uh, how to speak Arabic. Mm-hmm. The very beginning principle, you know, how to say hello, how to say goodbye introduce yourself as a, as a man or a woman, your name and all of that, you know, so, and he taught me that and I wanted to even go further than that and then you put me on the book, um, The Theology of Time, right. and I was reading that one and that book, it opened my eyes to a couple more things and I was like, and as I was reading, it was telling me inside the book that we were supposed to, we were, we were, we were supposed to be in the Islam community, right. we were supposed to be Muslim. So when you're doing something like when you're doing, and I'm practicing the the, the Islam and, the, and me me being Muslim, I wanted to do it because it was something that I loved and that was who I was. Right. So me finding Islam off of me finding my passion, I say, because I was like, all right, cool. I took a step back, and one of the main importance that I stress is peacefulness. Right. When you look at them, when you look at a Muslim woman or a Muslim man. Not, most of them are very peaceful. Actually, a lot of them are, are really peaceful. I'm not going to say everybody because there's always an anomaly out there. Right. But every Muslim I've ever met in person has always been so peaceful. They just be to themselves. It's the difference between being Muslim and being a terrorist. Let's just go ahead and knock <laughs> it out the way. A terrorist isn't per se a Muslim. It's, it's, it's just a person who's an extremist. That's what can go with any religion. Yeah. But I'm going to let you continue. Most definitely. So, I'll look at it and i see them at, and they're all... The term we use nowadays is ducked off. That, right. That's the term that uh, the, the basic thing that we use in our generation. All oh, that man, he ducked off right now. Right. Uh, when I was doing thrift shopping, when I was going thrift shop, I saw a Muslim man. Spoke to him, said hello, and it was just, it was so peaceful. Right. Like it was so, it was nice, and I was like, man, I, you have, I hope you have an amazing day. And he kept going on, just kept shopping, and he was enjoying himself. Right. But it was, he didn't go out of his way. To, to be rude he didn't, he didn't go out his way to even say hi right. you know it was like it was he was just a normal person because I want to stress that part because when I said I was Muslim before and I told people that they looked at me kind of like it was different or something yeah, yeah. it was more of a and I'm not going to say it was even a, a bad different they looked at me it was just like like you're Muslim like yeah. like how like the, then the follow up question each question was how why and then they just said okay. Yeah. That the ending was always okay, yeah. and I'm not. I wasn't expecting for nothing else. I mean, I mean, you you gonna agree or you don't? That's right. That nothing to do with me. But the first two quotes were always how and why. And what was your response? My how. The first when they asked me how did I become Muslim or how did I, how did I, or how did I, the 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 way they phrased the question was, what made you or how did you find Islam? How did you find being um, the Muslim culture? Right. And I told them it found. They found me. Right. I was just searching for the answer that was always inside of me. And it goes back to looking on the inside. I would never found it, but I didn't look within and say, okay, well, what do I do? Right. Uh, right. What do I like? What don't I like? What type of person I am? Am I, am I aggressive? Am I passive? You know, asking these questions to myself. Right. And then looking at a broad, real overview of what is a Muslim or what, or what practices uh, that that is on do right. and I saw it. okay well I do that I do that too right I do this too okay and eventually it it was kind of like you doing the characteristics checking the box and I'm like I'm doing everything they doing right so why am I sitting here claiming a whole another religion you know right no disrespect to them but why am I doing that if I if I'm fitting if all my characteristics are fitting this this stereotype or this 
broad overview right. of, of, of guidelines. Let's, let's, if, so I can stop trying to find a better word. Let's say, let's say there's a guideline, quote unquote, of how to be Muslim or what makes you Muslim, what makes you a part of the Islam community. Let's say that that's, that's what it is, that's the premise of the guideline. Right. And inside that guideline, I saw that I, I, meet, I met a lot of those criteria. Mm -hmm. So then once I saw that, it was more of a, dang, like now how am I gonna do this? Cause I was raised, my dad's a pastor. Right. Everybody in my family is Baptist. So now I'm now I'm stuck for two years. So that's why I don't really count those other two years. So that's why I say it's, it's more like three to four. Right. But actuality is probably what's well, going on. Yeah. So it's going. On, so if we want to go, everything is probably like five, six years. But me actually fully committing to right. it has been three years. Because on the first two years, I was one foot in, one foot out. Like, yeah, I'm practicing it, but it's a secret. Right. When I talk to people, I mean a lot, but I'll say God. So I, I, and I always just held back because I didn't want to be that outcast. I always wanted to be included in everything. And I, right. and I thought to myself, what if people did look at me differently? And what if I was an outcast and people started to treat me differently or more different than they did before? What if I put an extra target on my back? But then it was like a lot of all those worries away from me. Right. And I knew I was protected from anything and everybody that wanted to come my way. Right. So once I started to really do that, I said, okay. And then it was year two. And I remember it. It was year two. And I was over here. I was on YouTube. I'm watching a video. And it was so it was so simple. It was it was the dude on I wanna find his YouTube. Before I end this, I'm gonna have to find his YouTube and, and give that man a shout out. But he was just he was just speaking Arabic. Just simple hellos and goodbyes and I I was like, man, this is like I felt it in my heart. I can't really explain it no way. I felt it in my heart like like that just I was happy. I was happy to greet somebody and I went out my way and I called one of my, my other Muslim brothers. And I, I was like, bro, can I practice speaking Arabic to you? Right. You know, and he was like, oh, I don't speak Arabic, man. I'm like, yeah, you don't have to. I just need to, I just need to practice it. Keep right. going. And man, I, I was so in tune. It was almost like playing football. It was almost like, you know, you love the sport so much. You want to get at it all the time. You want to get that working. You want to hit the field. Right. You play back, you want to hit the court. I wanted to really learn about it and really be. I wanted to go around and just start speaking to people. And then once I really committed to it, oh my goodness, my, my life was shot up. I cannot express enough how many times Allah has blessed me since then. Right. Once I really committed and once I accepted him and I said, man, it's, I'm good. I'm right. protected here. And once that really kept going on, I sat there and I saw myself become even happier. Right. I was walking around with more smiles and Nothing really bothered me. Uh, the, the little thing that did bother me, somebody bumping into me. You know, even though I wasn't showing an ex extra on my intro, I'm like, bro, why, why the hell you bumped me, bro? Right. Like now, now I'm kind of tight because you you, did, you didn't have to do that. Or, yeah. you know, but now I'm but like. that encounter on your whole day and tight. Yeah. So, but now, once I once I accept it, I was like, it's nothing. It's okay. I forgive you. Right. You know, I know you didn't mean nothing, but like everything, all my encounters, I, I say hi to people willingly now. Right. I used to, but I used to do it for a uh, uh, under uh, underlining reason. I just want to say hi because I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to, I wanted to make you feel accepted. Right. And I wanted my image to be perceived as I'm a nice person, but I wasn't really nice. That was the truth behind it. it everything for multiple years of my life was a mad, was a was, was a cover up for everything else. Right. I wanted the perception, I wanted the image. I understood how the world worked. I understood that no matter who I am as a person, I understood that if I if I portray this image. Yeah. It was gonna be accepted, so I said, "Okay, people, people like good people, and good people get some good things and get right. their benefits. Okay, cool. I'm gonna make the image. I know how I feel inside, but on the outside, I'm gonna make y'all feel like right. and paint this other picture. Now is genuine. Everything I do is genuine. If I if I speak to you is out of genuine care, I want to make sure you're okay. Are you okay? Cool. All right. You have a great day, sir. Right. If I if I if I the simple stuff of holding doors open." I used to do it because my mom told me to. She said it's a respectful thing to do. Right. Now I do it because I, I just want to. Like I want to hold door. I want somebody to, to feel appreciated. Right. I want somebody to feel that love. Because I know how it felt when I didn't have that love. Yeah. Or I felt like I didn't have it. A lot of people were giving me love, but I never did accept it. Because I didn't love myself. Right. And, man, that that's a whole other topic, the loving yourself part. Right. But I 
did it. So no matter, so if I didn't love myself, no matter how much love someone else would give me, I would never accept it. Right. Because I would never understand it. I, I couldn't comprehend what you were trying to give me because I couldn't give myself that. Mm-hmm. So, man, I kind of spoke what I say. Talk about the part I got here. I don't lost my train of thought again. I was over here just rambling on, just just letting my brain go and letting my mind speak freely. I didn't even really sit here and just listen. <laughs> all I could do was just listen. Man, but that it wasn't just that though. I, I started to see doors open up different for me. Right. And things started to come my way. And I would say it was when I really discovered the power of prayer. Right. Because when I used to pray when when I pray when I was younger, I would pray, but I didn't know. Not I'm not gonna say I didn't know who I was praying to, but it was like I was praying. And right. That was it. I was told pray and everything would come come to light. Now when I when I prostrate myself, I know I know Allah's listening, and I know whatever I pray, I have no more worries about it. Right. So now everything else in my in, in this life in this external world here. I don't, I don't care about. You know what's crazy though? It's like, uh, let's just speak about the thing that, that people associate with Muslims, right? It's not eating pork. Mm-hmm. Even in the Bible, it says don't eat pork. But because that is, I feel like because that's the thing that's known for Muslims, people that follow the beliefs of the Bible don't take it seriously because it's seen as something that we do, which is crazy. And I can, I can show you, our, I, I got a faint memory of it, but if, if, if I was really, uh, I might just throw it on the screen or something, but it's really, it's really for real in there. A lot of stuff that is prohibited to eat that, I mean, Christians eat anyways. Yeah, a lot of the things that we're not, that you're not supposed to do, I mean, people do it anyways. So I, I would say is, I'm not going to say it's more strict. I feel right. like it's the, you are disciplining yourself because if, if in the Bible is telling you not to do these things, but you're doing it anyway. Right. And then in the Quran is telling me not do these things, and I do it anyway. There, like, there's no difference. The only difference is that if the book itself is what you're reading, right? But the person who's interpreting it and reading it, they have to be the one disciplined. Because when I said that, it was like, oh man, you eat pants all the time, which I did. Man, yeah. when I was, man, I used to bust down pants. You remember? Fold, fold, fold them chunks and then play, warm it up, fold a minute, uh, chop it up, get the syrup, breakfast on the go, I'm good. Now. I, I can't even really look like if you eat pork. I, I'm not gonna say I look at you weird if you eat pork. God, that's that's very rude of me. Right. But I can't look at pork anymore. Like it's just I, even when people cook, like I I see people cooking it and it'll look fire. Yeah. But I read what they're don't cooking. Have an appetite for. It. Yeah, but as soon as soon as I read what they're cooking, but they're cooking pork belly. I'm like, alright, cool. Yeah. I go past it. I'm like, bro, this. I'm not gonna eat this. I'm never gonna eat that. Right. Like that's just. Uh, like and pork just isn't good for your body. Like in general, like, it's not even about a religious thing. Like look up what's in pork. Right. Like, it's not good for your body. I know people that say, oh yeah, woo, but they eat pork, and I'm like, that explains a lot. That explains a lot why yeah. your body is the way it is. Like your body is a what they say, your body is a machine. Your body is a is a, a temple. There you go. And whatever you're putting inside of it is gonna react a certain way. Like everything that happens in your body, your body doesn't make a. a Law. Right. Your body doesn't make a mistake. It's doing it for a reason. If you if you fart, there's a reason. If you burp, there's a reason. Right. It, it, all that. Throw up, there's a reason. It's not supposed to be in there. So when you try to hold in all that, when you try to hold in your your farts or your burps, because it, 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 it's natural. Your right. body's supposed to do that. Even odors. Like I know we're getting real, but if if a girl has an odor down there, it's it's not nothing. Poor diet. Yeah, it's just telling you the body is telling you what it needs. It's not nothing wrong with it. It's the body is doing, it's trying to let you know in its own way right. what needs to happen, what you need to do to better it. And it's not, odor isn't something you fix in a, a week. Like that's a, a a real thing you gotta go through. Because yeah. even, I feel like before when I was younger, I feel like I had an odor, you feel me? And then later on in life when I started changing the way I did everything, it's like no longer a thing. Because I did that. I thought I had. I don't know if I really did or not, but I thought I did. Mm. So every time I would, I would, I would have have those encounters with females. I'm like, bro, did she smell something? Or da da da. Like I'm in my head, I'm for real. Like I'm really. But now it's like I know I don't because I eat a certain way, I drink a certain way, and I live a certain way now. Yeah. So it's not. 
Nah, it's man, bro. Cause it's going on the older thing. And I, I said it before, but it just your body is gonna let you know what it needs, right. what needs to be done. If you have a pimple, rash, something like like it's gonna it's letting you know what has to happen if you want this to be gone. Right. And I don't being Muslim has changed a lot for me in a very positive light. Eating habits, obviously. I don't eat pork no more. And now I, I eat a lot of more turkey. I don't even eat, like, I eat ground beef. I'm not going to say in a cat, but I never eat ground beef. But ground beef has a lot of grief. I, I have a lot of grease in it. Right. So now I don't even want to get in, indulged in that because I'm like, bro, that's hella fat. Like, it, you talking to me, it's like 70, 30. I think it was the, like, the, uh, the average for a, a, for a sleeve of ground beef is 70, 30. And ground turkey is 93, 7. 93 percent lean, 7 percent fat. So already I'm, I'm already getting that going on. Me learning more about my body, I, I eat more fruits, and I know it's like, well, what, what does being mother have to do with that? Well, I had to I had to take out something. Right. Me eating that pork will fill me up. Now me eating ground turkey, you feel me? That may not, you know, my, my snack used to be something I used to eat. You know what I'm saying? More chips. Right. And I most definitely still indulge me in some chips. But now I'll go grab me something else. I'll probably drink more water now, if anything, right. because it'll it'll fill me up and it'll eliminate that hunger that I had, quote unquote. So me being becoming Muslim has me becoming Muslim has changed my eating habit, which has affected my health in a positive right. light. It's also helped me with discipline. Cause I when I was doing this as well, I was practicing my retention. Right. And for me to understand that I'm not eating pork and I can stop myself from eating pork even though I did it every day showed me that I can retain my semen it's not difficult it's just discipline yourself to do that right the no social media taught me that as well disciplining myself to say I don't need that but all that started from the root of not eating pork like in when I said that it was like oh my goodness it's so difficult I love bacon get turkey bacon guys it's the same same thing yeah same, same concept but <laughs> different type of meat come on like you eat it the same it's, it's fire like what's what's wrong I don't get how you can't substitute that right like, that's something so simple like people made it seem like you eat pork every single time right, right? like you like pork is the only meat you have to eat bro what <laughs> program program that way that's all yeah man program is, is a big factor crazy well. crazy crazy but that's how I became uh that's how I became Muslim that's my reasoning behind that as well right. and I know there's a lot more as as this conversation could go out. I'll, I'll think of more things that helped me with. Right. But the main thing is was my mindset into life itself. I looked at life a whole a whole lot different. I saw more positive than negative, which is what affected me to, to be a more positive person. Right. Cause I looked at everything like it was it was good. It was a reason for it. Now I used to be annoyed, really. If I'm being honest, if it offends people, I know cause I help people like this. Right. But some people in my in my past life. Like, and well, I said my past life because I was the old me and this is the new me. Right. In my past life, people would come to me and ask me for help and they problem and I'd help them, but I'm like, yo, why the, why the hell are you coming to me, bro? Right. I'm not trying to talk to you. I don't care about your problems. I don't. Right. You feel me? But now, I genuinely do want to help people. If you have a problem, come to me, find right. me, and I will try my absolute best and within my power to help you become and get to the next level of your life because there's no reason for me to be the only person to have this knowledge or, or feel this way when I feel like it's a it's a really positive thing. Me going out into the world smiling, right. I don't just walk. I, I'm happy most definitely, but I'd be lying if I walked out with a smile from ear to ear 24 right. seven. I don't, I have a normal face, but I'm most definitely, I'm happy. When you see, if I see somebody, I'll interact with y'all, smile and laugh, I'll greet you with kindness and everything. Even, right. And now I got to the point, if you come at me sideways, I'm looking at you like, bro, this is not nothing to do with me. You're mad at something that happened way before you even met me. So I'm going to let you continue on with your life. I only be forced with force. That's the only time. So that's my that's my whole take on my process and my journey. And I'm still on it. All uh, right. Of being a better Muslim man. Sheesh. Mine's just a little bit. Mine's a long process, to be honest with you, bro. I, hmm. my, my situation... And becoming, or my evolution in becoming who I am, or who I want to be, I should say, because I'm still not a, a complete and finished product, but started in, I want to say sixth grade, seventh grade, well, I know for sure it's seventh grade, but I think it started becoming a, a idea in my mind in sixth grade, because I went to school with, with other Muslims, mm. and 
it was something I've never was never exposed to growing up. I just thought it was only what it was, which was was, was, was Christianity. Mm-hmm. And so being around them, I it was they were they were they were nicer than everybody else. They 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 the demeanor was different. It was just a you can feel you can feel the the, the, the two different types of energies. Yeah. And so seventh grade comes around. I actually started to get real curious, like, okay, what is being Muslim? What is what is that? And so they were talking to me. They didn't eat certain stuff at school. They rarely ate at school. For me, sometimes they wouldn't even eat at school. Um, shout out, shout out to, to all the Muhammad's that went to my school, man. I appreciate y'all for for showing me that way of life. Um, yeah, boom. Seventh grade, I was I was I was curious. Eighth grade comes around. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm joking around, but I'm like, when I'm 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 gonna convert. Cause at the time I didn't know that that we re we, as 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 humans we revert to what we were supposed to or that what we were until we got programmed. <clears throat> so I was telling them that I was, I was going to come back and my name was going to be Abdul Muhammad, right? Mm-hmm. And I was joking, but subconsciously I was serious, not knowing the whole time. I obviously didn't change my name to Abdul Muhammad, but I'm a Muslim man. Um, and then I, I would say that I kind of envied them, you know, because it was something that they had that I didn't have. It was yeah. a, a sense of peace, a, a sense of, of self. Um, and every time, like, on the rides, going home, going to school, I would always see Majid. So I'm like, okay, boom, I'm looking at it like, what is that? That looks different than what I go to. Because I've growing up, I went to all the, un, the, the, the undenominational churches, the, 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 the Baptist church, any church you can name. My mom's a firm believer in. Jesus Christ is her savior and Christianity and, and that's that. You feel me? I'm, boss, like I'm, I'm an outlier when it comes to that. So, boom, eighth grade, I'm still curious, ninth grade, curious, tenth grade, I'm okay, cool. I'm gonna, I'm eventually, I'm getting to that point to where it's like, okay, I'm gonna be a Muslim man. And it's, there's no question about it. So, tenth grade comes, um, Nothing, just nothing in my life feel like it's going my way. And I'm just like, okay, well, maybe it's because I'm doing something wrong. So then I start to search online, as everybody does, and they want to look for information. I'm searching, I'm searching, I'm searching. It's becoming more clear. I'm learning new things. Um, and I just started to adapt in small ways. Like, I didn't take my shahada. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't open with it. I was just, just going through the motions. 11th grade, 12th grade pass. Boom. I'm still in the process of trying to become a full Muslim. I'm, I, I'm just, feel me, it's no such thing as a half Muslim, but I feel like that's the best way to describe myself is I was a, I was a half Muslim. I was, I was, internally I wanted to be, but externally I couldn't be. Yeah. So, I'm an adult now. Um, okay, cool. You can't tell me what I can and can't be no more. It's not anybody else's decision. Nobody else can make me feel bad. So, boom, graduate. Um, and then I start to really, I really put those 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 teachings and those those those. How do I want to say it? I, I put I just start changing my life for the better. Yeah. So, so after I start implementing the the, the the way of life into my life, I finally got the courage to take my shahada. When I took my shahada, I felt different. Uh, I guess I start moving different. I start, I feel like I started to, something in me just clicked. Once yeah. I took my shot, it just clicked. Uh, I, was st- I, I was still the me that I was before I took my shot. It was just me as a person understanding my, my vision, understanding where I wanted to go, my direction, it all changed. And not to cut you off, but you hit it where it was like you were still you. Right. Where there was... Well, I felt like with people when I told people I was Muslim now, right. they thought I was gonna do a whole 180 where I was no longer gonna be snacks or no longer be richer. Like it was almost like people thought I'm about to be a totally different person. How, right. how you say you, you was joking around when you say you wanted to change your name to Muhammad, but you know I think that's what people at first mindset was. Ah, oh, this man finna go to whole. He finna wear the whole like jibs. He finna he finna go to the masjid. He he finna do extra. I can't talk to him about nothing. Some of this right. stuff. Turns out, man, same person. 
same person, just a better life. Right. You know, I, I, I will most definitely want to hit that because it's like, I feel like people unconsciously, it wasn't like they purposely did it because I don't, I don't believe they really meant any harm by it, but unconsciously they try to keep me down at that lower right. vibration. I wasn't, I wasn't meant for that. I wasn't built for that right. level. It was, ugh. And through through the, thinking about it just. Through the whole process, it was a, it was a shift because like, I always went to church, but it never fulfilled me. Yeah. So it was like I'm here. I always had questions. Yeah, I don't want to be here, but I, I, if 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 I'm defiant, I'm gonna be looked at as, as such and such. And so it started getting to the point where I realized, like, where I really dread going to church. Like I'm, I'm I'm staying up all night so I can sleep when it's time to go to church, so I don't have to go. I'm I go to church. I sit there quiet, mad because I'm here because I know I'm not supposed to be here. I don't want to be here. And it was, and I guess. To me, it was it was it was like okay, people are making it seem like I'm going through a childish mind state, but it was just because it wasn't the time, or the, it just really, it wasn't the place for me to be. Yeah, it was it was something that was forced upon me, but yeah, through the whole time it was just it was just me getting further and further away because it was a point where I'm like, my mom doesn't understand for me who I am. I'm not I'm not receptive to to Christianity, so if she's not receptive. To, to me telling her from how I feel, then maybe there is no God. You feel me? Yeah. So I went through that for for a couple months because I'm just like, well, nothing in this worldly, this worldly thing is is it gets me. And so that's the point where when I actually start studying, understanding like, okay, this is what what I've been looking for the whole time. This is what I was I was meant to have the whole time. It was just it was just taken away from me. Yeah. I was robbed of who I was supposed to be. Man, bro, and. I go back because that just hit my head when you were saying your mother was really receptive. Well, it was like, my pop, right, well, it was from my big fact of telling people. Right. That was, and, and you was there for that word. I I had, I cried too right. a lot because I was like, I don't want them to be so resentful and, and be like, they, I don't want, I'm, I'm a real people's person, so I feel other people's pain. Right. And I didn't want them to feel like they failed at parents. Right. That was my biggest fear. I did not want them to make them feel like they did something wrong. Right. Like, why is my son Muslim? Like, why? What did I do? Did I not take him to church too much? Did I not do the practices of the Bible? Or did right. I, like they? I didn't want them to start questioning themselves because I I only I don't know what happened behind closed doors. Anyway, they don't know unless right. I speak and I bring into the light and. Like I just said, man, I literally had to sit and cry and, and pray to Allah, and I'm asking, I'm like, yo, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you feel me? I don't want them to feel like that, and it, I had to take that out, and I had to say, well, this is, this isn't about them, right? I can't be in hiding no more. So me sitting down, I took my dukes first, and I was like, man, I took my dukes, and I told him, I said, look, mom, I'm Muslim. There was no, it was no way for me to be behind that bush or that. I couldn't say, yeah, you know, the boy skipped down the yellow brick road and boom, he found a Quran. No, right. I just, mom, I'm, I'm Muslim. And her reaction was so, it wasn't what I was expecting because she was trying to tell me about different outlets because she wanted to, I think when I told her I was 18. Yeah, that would be true. Yeah, so I was 18 when I told her. Right. So in that mindset, she still thinks I'm a child. So she's like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. So I, we had a, a real, real bot, real basic conversation. Right. Went back to my, went back upstairs. I'm thinking everything good. I'm thinking, all right, well, I guess that's the end of it. Nah, the rest of that day, you know, I was getting, she was trying to call different people, call my dad, you feel me? Because he was a pastor and trying to help me explain it. She's like, oh, I got to find other pastors to, to explain to you what it is. Because right. I had a lot of questions. I was like, well, you know, why are there so many Bibles? Why are some verses being taken out? Why are some words being completely misworded? Like you're telling, they may say, this is nowhere in the Bible. But just a basic example, the sentence would be like, the apple fell from the tree. Right. Then they'll switch it and they'll say, the apple was loose, so it fell from the tree. Right. Or they may say there was no tree. They may just say the apple fell. Right. So it's like, it's there's different verses and things getting taken out and I'm not understanding that. I'm not understanding how can you're you're saying Christian Christianity as a whole, but then you have 
branches and then you're telling me that this part of Christianity believes in this, it does believe in this, but this part of Christianity believes in that. I'm not understanding it. I mean, that's what all, even even in Islam, there's, for me, it, it, it separates the yeah. different different sects. So it's, it's the same with everything, but it's just the teachings. Yeah. With, with Christianity, we really didn't have any teachings growing up. It was just, you do what your mom and father said. Yeah. There's no, Allah wants you to do this, or God wants you to do this. However you, however you, however you take it, you feel me? It's just how you grasp it. Like, they try to make the, 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 the thing, but it's more, it's more violence outside of Islam than it is in Islam. So, it's, it's the agenda that's behind it's crazy. But, uh, but, I, but, I didn't know. You but, but, so the thing was, though, also, when I, when I did tell her that and we went through all that, then my dad, you know, we had that conversation and that was a real difficult one. Right. Because, again, he pastor. So yes. it's like, what did I do? And I'm telling my dad, you did nothing. Right. You, you did nothing wrong. I don't want you to feel like you did anything wrong. And I don't want you to feel like I'm changing my whole way of living. Right. right? I don't want you to feel like I'm about to, you're not going to know who your son is. Right. You are. I'm going to be the same person. The same exact person I was before. Uh, just a little more tweaks to better myself as a man. Right. And at the end of the day, I feel like as a parent, that's all you wanted is for, is for your child to become the best version of themselves. Right. And I'm nowhere near my best version, but I'm on the path to become that version of myself. Where it's like I, I seen where I had my flaws and where I messed up at in the past, and I corrected them. I seen the way I talked, the way I treated people, I corrected it. Right. I didn't need no more. So now I'm more confident in myself. If anything, now I know like what I'm worth, what I represent, who I represent. And I step like that. So now you can't play me like I'm a dummy or, or right. try to convince me that I'm something that I'm not. And I stand on it. So now my my more of my principle, where I didn't really stand on, if I'm being completely honest, I never really stood on those. Now I'm firm, all 10. Right. I'll be 20 beyond all. You feel me? I, I'm going, I'm in it. And I want that to be understood. Right. Where I've only grown. I've only grown. And yes, most definitely, I'm not saying it was easy. Some of the things I had to do was very difficult. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just now, for a couple months, learning the prayers and, and learning the different poses and and how many... Rokas. There we go. I was about to mispronounce that. I didn't want to do it. But how many Rokas I need to do and the the names of the prayers and at what time and everything. Like I'm really just now getting into it. You know, Ramadan was one thing that was tough for me. You know? But this upcoming Ramadan... Ooh, I'm gonna knock out the part. <laughs> Definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this one. But, you know, a discipline there where I was doing football, but I still didn't eat, you know what I'm saying, or drink right. during those two a day. You know, I, I'll be lying to you. I'll be lying to a loss. And everybody else on this podcast, if I said I, I completed the whole month, I did right. not. You know, but for a week, for a solid week going on two, I was in that. I was real disciplined. You right. know, even when. Mouth dry as cotton, and my stomach rumbling, doing flips and anything yeah. gymnastics. You know, I stood, I stayed true to it, and I showed myself that I can do it. So now with this one, man, I'm just like I said, I'm hitting it out the park. I know I'm, I know what I got to do. I'm ready for it. But boom, uh, so boom. After I hit in the door, I took my shahada. I found peace. Uh, then it just start becoming to where it was like I'm meeting people that's like me. Hmm. I'm, now I'm, I'm interacting with people that, that before I, I I embraced who I was, I didn't meet or I didn't pay attention to. Um, then I was actually around somebody that taught me, for me that taught me hmm. words, sayings, uh, uh, surahs, um, Arabic a little bit. Just a lot of a lot of stuff happened, and it was for the better. If I would have never. Open my eyes, I should say, then it would be, it would have, I would have been in a way worse situation because I feel like some of my old characteristics continue with me. But now, I'm gonna say this year, for me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to let go of my old self yeah. because it's a lot of flaws and it's a lot of things that can contribute to my downfall. That if I don't change, Allah, Islam. Prayer, none of that's gonna matter because I'm a self destruct. Yeah. And so I just gotta let old me go and, 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 and be be a, a Muslim man. But we're talking about being a Muslim man. Every Muslim man needs a Muslim. You feel me? And so 
that's that's a real a real topic. Like finding a, a woman that's Muslim or a woman that's trying to revert to, to Islam is is important because we can't be Muslim men and, and or with somebody that don't share our beliefs. Yeah. It's, it's it's hard. It's 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 almost impossible. Huh. So so uh, I'm, I'm gonna let you because I got a lot to say on this topic. So I'm gonna just let you go first and what you feel about. I was hit with that the first like that was my first question when I right. did start doing it because I was like, do I? Because the question that, well the question was posed to me at first, right? And that's what got into my head. And my, one of my man asked me, am I going to date a Muslim girl, right? Or Muslima? Muslima. Muslima. See, learn you learn something new every day, but. I, I told him I said I would I would like that yes but whoever Allah puts in my life I know that there that she's there for a reason right. so whether she's going to revert or or she's already there then that's what it is but I I can't I couldn't really answer that question right but I do knew I knew the the risk and the difficulties that came with that if if I dated a Christian and I was Muslim and Hit him in that household and just allowing it, but it goes back to the open mind, open mindedness, right. and Alhamdulillah for blessing the for pity of the people in my life that are there. Because I'll be again, not everybody I know or everybody I'm cool with is Muslim. Right. I have a majority of my friends are Christians or they or they're in the I don't know stage like I was. Like I don't know like, there's a God out there, but I don't, you know, they on that part. But they all accept me for who I am. They accept my, you know, accept my beliefs and, and right. say, okay, well, this is who he is. I'm okay with that. I'm fine with him being that. I don't, I, they don't force nothing else upon me. So, I feel like with me personally, overall, that's what I need in my life, especially in a woman. Somebody to accept me for who I am. Right. Because I, I learned now that if I don't love somebody for who they are, then I need to go find somebody I love for who they are. Right. Because, because before we meet somebody, we had nothing to do with them. Right. I feel like that's where, we, that's where we fail and that's where we fall off at where a lot of our generation and even older generation you try to change people and that's not what you're meant here Can't to do. teach an old dog new tricks. Come on, man. So, I'm trying to change you and you don't want to change or it's not your time to change because sometimes there's some things that you can't change at that moment. It's tough. It's very tough. Right. Yeah, that's like telling a, a crack addict to, to change instantly overnight. Just stop doing crack. No, right. it, it takes... It's going to take time, but you have to put forth that effort. So I say, for me, at this very moment, I need somebody to accept me for who I am right. and the path that I'm going. And if if my significant other, if she if she do want to join me on my journey, I I would love that. Right. I would love that, but I'm not going to force that upon them. And if she's only there for a season, for to teach me something, then that's what it is. That I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for her presence and right. I'm grateful for the things she has taught me because that's what a lot of things happen. The last girl I, w- I was really talking to, I mean, she was a real stern Christian. Church on the laptop gang. I, right. I was my first time really, man, she didn't go to church. She she couldn't log on. And she had some fancy church. Back in my church, we didn't have that. Right. She didn't have an AC. You had to, yeah, yeah, you had to go crazy. Good to see you. But to see that, and even then, she accepted me. She didn't force me to do anything else. I told her what I believed, and it was okay. Now, maybe on the interior, maybe that would ate her up. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she couldn't fully grasp what I was doing. But, again, that's what I, again, I stress that that's what I need. I just right. need a person to accept me for who I am and, and accept the journey that I'm on. If you would like to be a part of it, that's perfectly fine. I have no problem with you being there. Right. But... As soon as you start to affect my peace and you're trying to tell me how, how, what I'm doing is wrong or uh, or if you even start saying, I don't want the child, now I have to leave because you're, you're disturbing my peace and everything else and right. that's not needed. I mean, my, my take on this a lot different because I'm going through it right now. Yeah. So, I mean, first and foremost, a Muslim man isn't, isn't, it's not something that you just choose to do and not to do at certain times. Just like being a Muslim woman is it? You need the, 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 a united front as Muslims to, to be successful because like me going through the motions every day with being someone that's not, it's, it gets harder and harder because every little thing is like well, a challenge because she does everything differently. 
she eats differently, so you have to buy two different types of food. She she looks at shit differently, so you have to value your opinion and stand on your morals harder than what you would normally have to if it was two Muslims inside of the home because now it's like I have to make sure my point gets across. I have to make sure I don't fold on my morals because we're, 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 we're clashing heads kind of sort of at that point. It's just the whole pork thing. Like For her, it's hard not to eat pork, but for me, it's like that in a home with us is disgusting. Like That shouldn't even be here. Her, her, uh, the way she looks at Islam is kind of the terrorist, the terrorist way. It's like, well, no matter how much I explain that Islam isn't terrorist, it's like, okay, well, all she knows is what she's seen, and so that's what she, she, in her mind, is what it is. I mean, even even though she sees who's I am, I'm I'm a peaceful person. When we argue, I stop arguing. When we disagree, okay, cool. When when there's a problem, let's get it done. Keep it pushing. Um, and I guess it's also characteristics because we have two different characters, and we were we were, up, we were brought up two different ways. Yeah. So I feel like that's what it was. My father cut you off. That also life. plays a part, a big part, for sure. But and it's also her not willing to see something a different way, because I was a part of Christianity most of my life, so I understand Christianity. But you can't put your shoes in a Muslim way because you've never been Muslim. Yeah. So to you, you only know this, but then you, she, you feel me? We, we have questions. She has questions about certain things. Like when I asked her, so if if, if it's like when I pretty sure I told you, if Jesus is your brother, why do you worship him? Yeah. I asked her that. She was like, well, you're right. You feel me? I be having questions too. But it's like if you have questions about your your beliefs and your 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 and and what's your morals root to, then why are you why are you still choosing that? I mean that goes backwards. Uh, even. The, the teaching that what we're talking about now, yeah, we're pitting it on, but it's the same thing that you put into life. If you have right. questions about something, why why not pursue that? Like, like pursue, try to find those answers. Because right. it's not, the thing is nothing wrong with having questions. We're, we're made to have free will. We have, we're curious. Right. So if something don't have an answer, it, it, it bothers, me, especially for two people. I can only speak for myself for shit, for shit. So where it's like, I will have questions and I won't have answers to them. Right. And that bothers me because I'm like, I feel like there should be an answer for this question. Right. Like that, why, why is this just a, a non, uh, like, well, why are you just sitting here and this is just a question or did nobody ever think of this? Right. To even put forth the effort to find and use the resources to find, figure out this answer. And it's crazy because we were going through something, right? And she asked me to pray with me. But for me, it was like, you don't even really believe in what I, so it would be a disservice to me and Allah yeah. to allow you to pray with me because you don't take what I take seriously. Yeah. So if I'm finna just pray with you and you're finna go back to your old ways, it, 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 for me, it's no point. And maybe I should have prayed with her just to, just so she can understand and put her in the mind frame. But it's like, this is something that you have to go through. I didn't make Shalat until I became a Muslim. Yeah. I'm not going to... For me, it kind of seemed like a mockery a little bit, even though it probably wasn't meant to be that. Yeah, no. But another thing which you said earlier, and I think it was more of the... Uh, sense, you said something about characteristics, but then you said... Uh, it was... It was the... Oh... You were talking about the characteristics and not really, like, you, if she did try to pray, right? right? And then she just went back to her old ways, kind of like, yo, what are you doing? You know, but it was talking about the situation of when it's dead, it's dead. Like, me becoming more peaceful, I don't allow, I don't continue on. Right. I mean, even, you know, the situation that just happened, I'm not going to let that continue on. Right. Like, it's dead. It's nothing for us to, it's nothing for us to, to discuss. Right. You know, if me, us discussing is going to make somebody else more angry. And I'm not gonna be the one getting mad. So I'm not saying this, but it would be uh, from the outside looking in. It's almost like you, you, were, we were taught to have the uh, the it's, it's good, it's right. okay. It's, you're meant, you're supposed to talk out your problem. You're supposed to speak your pain. You're not supposed to hold it in. And, but what people don't understand is that sometimes I'm not holding it in. If I say I'm done with it, I'm actually done. It's right. not. It's not. No, I'm resenting. Or I don't. I don't want to speak my mind. Or you won't care. No, I really don't. It's done for. Right. This conversation is dead. Like there's nothing else to discuss. You said your. You spoke your piece. I spoke mine. We didn't come to agreement. Okay, fine. Let's keep it pushing. What? Right. What's there us to the? What there's else no is love. there for us to? Come on now. There's no love lost. So, but that. But I feel like people don't take it that way. Right. And I'm not gonna just sit here and say. 
you becoming Muslim or, or you joining the Islam culture is going to make you see that mindset. Right. But it most definitely helps because when you value your peace and your energy over a lot of things, you don't entertain a lot of stuff because it's not going to benefit them. Right. Like, there's so many examples I can give where I'm like, bro, this isn't going to do nothing for me. Right. What am I over here discussing about? Like, people be on Twitter beefing. What are you, what am I gaining from this beef? Right. Even if, I, even if everything I said was 100% fact, you're not going to get it because you're ignorant. So right. what am I getting out of that? There's no point. I'm not even going I'm not going to start this. Right. Sometimes I don't even, and maybe that's like, you can say that's a flaw, but sometimes I don't even start things because I assume I, I got a good feeling where it's going to go. Right. So there's no point in me even, even trying to start this conversation. Like if I try to start a conversation with, uh, if I start a conversation with a diehard Christian, like right. Jesus is Lord and Savior. Yeah, and you're not getting nowhere. I, Stand, he's going to stand there. I'm like, all right, cool. So there's no point. So now I know that it's not going to go nowhere. So I'm not even going to attempt to start this conversation because you're going to get more mad and you're going to try to stir my peace. And I'm not going to get mad. It was going to make you even more mad because your anger isn't getting to me. Yeah, I'm I, still peaceful and you're, 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 you're irrational at that point. Yeah. So I, I believe in the garbage truck. You know, shout out to my algebra teacher in Elkin because she put me on, but it made so much sense. Right. She was like, you know, if, if, if somebody, if somebody carry garbage all the day, all day, and they dump all that garbage on you, then you take that garbage and you go dump it on somebody else. The garbage is whatever you want it to be, anger, right. whatever the case may be. So if somebody's anger and they and angry at you and they try to pit that anger on you, but you don't accept it. Right. I don't, I'm not going to accept your anger. I'm going to come at you. I, I understand. I, I'm sorry you feel that way, sir. Right. You have a great day. Now they're even more mad because they didn't get that reaction out of you. And now they're going to keep trying to get a, react, get a reaction. So... Like I said, Islam and me being Muslim has most definitely helped with that because now I value my peace. I value my energy. I'm not going to just let anybody take it. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're if you're family, brother, sister, mom, dad. I don't care if you're an associate. I don't care if you're a friend. If you're not, if, if you're if you're just talking reckless and, and you're disturbing my peace, I'm leaving. Right. I'm going to leave the scene. I'm going to do what I got to do. And if you want to come back or if we both want to come back and I say, okay, cool. Are you, are you okay now? Right. Then we'll get it going. But... I'm not about to sit here and get into a screen match with you. Then there's nothing to be learned. Yeah, I mean, she, that's where that's where being with the Muslim woman comes to play, especially for somebody that, that was raised that way. Because y'all have that understanding. And more than anything, she'll teach you more. Because she has a lot more to offer in that aspect than you do. Mm. All you have to all you bring to the table is 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 what any man brings. Mm. But you, she also gets the enjoyment of seeing you grow. Yeah. Like, I would love to be with somebody. Like, I want to get to the point where I know Islam in and out. There's no weakness in, in my knowledge of Islam. There's no questions I have with Islam because I'm, I'm, I'm solid with Allah and Allah keeps feeding me answers. Mira, uh, the quote I sent when it was like, uh, be so close to Allah. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Man, I, it, it hit because I was like, Yo, like that would be like I just thought about that and, yeah. and made me I'm smiling even. You should have seen my reaction. I was like seeing somebody do a 360 windmill or something. I'm like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> like, ooh that's like, hit hit a little different. You know, cause I was like, I I know I'm not, I'm not there yet. I know I'm not. I gotta be on myself, but the bond that me and him are growing, I feel like that's what makes me smile so much. Right. Is I see and I feel within myself the bond and I'm like it's just so. Oh, I just. So what are what are, what would you say? One, what are five things you think you need to grow as a Muslim man? I think we both can agree on shalat. Yeah. So boom. Uh, the prayers. Those is most definitely a big thing. Uh, learning to pray inside and out. Learning them in Arabic. I right, let me not just right. say learn the prayer, because yeah, I, I know some of the prayers, but in English. So learning them in Arabic is another big part of it. Going another thing that I want to say is like somebody. Um, I guess it doesn't. I want to put this in here as I'm mention, but going to Mecca, right? That's like something I, I, I want to. That's do. that's you need. You have to do yeah. that as a Muslim. That's yeah. one of the five, one of the five pillars. You yeah, feel me? You, that's mandatory. So, but I mean, I, I that's something that even if it, even if it wasn't, right? I will, I will want to go there because I like I be looking at pictures and I just feel like that energy around is you're surrounded by nothing but Muslims. It's just There's so much peace. Like. Oh my, <laughs> yo, like it's just, I, man, I, that just made me happy. Oh, right. Wow. But, um, yeah, going to Mecca, the overall, me being, because 
I let things phase me that it shouldn't at all. Like, even just now, like, my brain was somewhere else for a couple right. seconds because of what just happened. I'm like, that should have even, fa- I, I, sh- I should have most definitely even let that even come near. I should right. that should have been dubbed. That should, it shouldn't have got no time for nothing. Right. So that alone, and then the fifth one, bro, honestly, is being being one. I would right. say being true and one with myself and one with the law. What I mean by that is I want to I want to be able to the only I best way I can explain it is on the out on the exterior and on the interior are one. There's no difference there. It's, I'm not trying to feel one way on the inside but portray something else. Right. I want to be one when you look at me like this is who I am. I say I said now oh, well, what you see is what you get. Right. I'm half I'm half telling the truth, I'm half lying. Cause it's something that, you know, I hold inside. But I want to get to a point where I'm just open and I'm in love with myself and I know everything. How you said no is on from back like the back of my hand. Right. To a point where it's like I walk with a with a different what I say last time, a different swagger, a different right. demeanor, a different confidence, something. All these different words to say the same thing. I want to know who I am. Right. And know what I stand on and know <clears throat> that what I stand on is, is true and what is right. Most definitely. Yeah. That was in my five. I, yeah. I guess for me, like I said, making shalat, I want to, at least 360 days, I want to make all five, all five shalats. Every, every, because I mean, obviously you're going to you're gonna miss, but if five days out the whole year, if that's all I miss, for me, I'm, I'm almost perfect. Yeah. Um, secondly, I want to know the Quran from, uh, I don't, because I don't know how long it take me to know the Quran from front to back, but I want to know at least where to find stuff. If I'm looking for something, I, I can flick to it and I know where it is. Yeah. Third, improve, I need to, I want to know how to read and understand, like hearing Arabic. I don't have to, I don't have to uh, know how to write. You feel me, that in moments. I don't have to know how to write Arabic. I mean, that's obviously a plus, but I don't have to know how to write Arabic, but being able to read it and, and understand it from speaking it, uh, that's definitely three. Um, four is I really, and, 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 and women, and in Surah, and with women, I wanted to put those lessons in my life for sure. Like, I know I, I live by, by, by the, the, the dean, but woman is, is in particular in that in that sort of is, is so much knowledge with, with with saving for your kids, saving for yourself, saving for your wife, where to leave stuff, how to treat women, I mean how to how to just the whole way is is, is crazy. And five, I would probably say I mean besides the five, because I don't want to name any of the five pillars, but I guess I have to. Nah, I don't. I guess number five is is, is just being open, honest, and and and, and spreading it. Yeah, is it's necessary. Cause going back to your uh, your your fourth one, when when you was talking about the paying those teaching into there, right? Where in the which people and this is just something that I feel like. It, it highlights the Quran, right? Where people want to view nothing but the terrorism and the negative, but literally in the Quran, if we commit sin, we're not. It's not no. Yes, you most definitely pray and repent, but you have to act service. It, it would be like you have to free a slave, right? Feed a needy, give clothes to to the homeless, some along that nature of giving back, right? It because because you sin, and it's like that right there is is a highlight because. Because we sent, we must go out of our way to help somebody right. else and help the next person. You've been selfish, so now you have to be selfless. Like, and I did it, right? And like I told you, when I did that, a blessing has came in. Right. But my intentions were pure, and that's where people felt to realize, or I say some people felt to realize that really, it's also, an Islam is about the intent. A lot know what you share and what you don't share. So if your intentions are pure, he knows that it's going to be a blessing because you, you meant no harm to that. So I, and every time I go past a homeless person or a person's panhandling, 
I, I get upset at myself sometimes. I'm like, yo, I don't have nothing to give you. Right. So I feel, I, I even feel bad to even look at you because I'm like, I can't look at you in your eyes and see that I couldn't help you that much. Right. So I, I keep my head straight, not because I don't want to be like, oh, I don't, I don't want you to look at me. I just, I feel bad that I couldn't help you. Right. And it, it, if, if I really had, had it, you know what I'm saying, just to do it. I would most definitely go buy something, spend the block, and go give it back because I, right. I, I really do feel bad that I couldn't do something for you. So whenever, so now I'm trying to get into the price of at least carrying five, ten dollars in, in ones or some, right. carry some type of cash on the tour. Like if I do drive and I go out, I can I can go bless somebody with or whatever. Um, Taco Bell doing a little ten dollar stuff I saw where right. it's like you could do a subscription. So maybe you know maybe I'll do that you know and, and I'll have like. You know, ten people, that's a hundred dollars a month. Right. But you know, that's basically my phone bill where I can spend a hundred dollars a month on ten right. different people. And who's to say that they not bust somebody else? They may save up and they tacos and give it to the next person. So right. that that right there can get a lot of stuff going. But I, I wanna do something around that area because it giving back is so it's nice. I love that. Right. Like, <laughs> it feels good to give back and not give something so materialistic. I'm not a material person. Right. And I, I kind of fail to realize that because some people are material people and, you know, I have to, uh, if I want to help them or if I want to give them a gift, I have to give them some material love. But just me, for me, just knowing that you care yeah. is enough for me. Knowing that there's love is enough for me. I'm okay with that. As long as I know you, you care about me, you love me, and you want my best, I'm perfectly fine with right. with that. I don't need nothing else from you because I can go get everything else myself. I really needed it, right. you know. One of the, like that's one of the main things I say, um, especially especially when I'm talking to a female, where it's like I appreciate the little thing I do appreciate is the care, right. you know, like just me wanting to help, but you caring. Long story short, I wanted to help her, but she said she was sick. Right. But I said it's okay. I'm protected by Allah. I most definitely come over, make sure that you're okay. But she cared about my health, and she's like, "No, stay over there." Right. I appreciate that because it, it's something so small that. But you didn't have to say. It. You could have most definitely said, "F it, f your health." Yeah, come over here, help me. Come right. Over. But you cared enough about my health to say, "I, you can get through this yourself. Or you can get through this by yourself without me being there." Right. So that that alone that made me want to go over there more. Cause I'm like, now I want to help you even more. You know, at first I wanted to help you just because. I genuinely want to help you. Now I, now I didn't even want to go get in the car now and say, all right, I'm not taking no for an answer. Right. You know, but it's those small things, just those gestures that are enough for me. And I feel like it's enough for people in Islam, the, the, the Muslim, you, as long as we know that you care, your intentions are pure to us, right. I can't ask for no more than that. I mean, see, that's, I don't really have too much more to say. I don't know. This is beautiful. Like, even now, I just, after saying that, I'm like, Man, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate this, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all too for for listening because this is more than a podcast. Especially, you know, all our episodes are different and unique in their own way. They bring something different to the table. But this right here is something that hit home for me. Something that I haven't been able to be open about truthfully. Right. So me being able to express myself and and really get that off my chest, I feel a relief. I felt like you know something's off my shoulders and especially. Man, I it ain't nothing else to say, bro. It just especially, I, I love everybody that's here, all the supporters. Of, you know what I'm saying? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for all the support, everything that y'all have done. Y'all have heard it before. Y'all heard it again, though. I love y'all. Follow all the socials that's in the description. BT underscore movement on IG. BT movement on Twitter. BT underscore movement on TikTok. Um, being the evolution on Clubhouse. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get that 20 minutes a day. You know sure. what I'm saying? Tune in, talk about stuff, whatever you was on your minds, we're most definitely in. I say 20 minutes, but if the conversation good, hey. More than likely, it'll be more than 20. But Because conversations flow. Time don't even matter when you're in a good conversation. Man, it do. So, but, you know, the for people that want a, a number, right? you know, we're going to throw that out there for y'all. But it most definitely be more. Ain't none. Ain't none. You know what I'm saying? That you got 24 hours to, to spend. I'm going to spend it wisely. If I spend on helping people, hey. Yes, sir. With all that being said, man, checkmate, I'm checking out. Yup, snacks. Peace. Yup.